By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Hilversum, the Netherlands, to cover the Hill Giant Cup for you. This is a match from the first round. This is a first episode from a series that will start at round number one today and will advance all the way to the finals. And in round number one, we've got David, who's on an ATOC deck, and he's taking on Jimmy, who's on a black and white deck. So that's your dead guy, Ill Brew. And um, they're pretty cool decks. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. But before I jump into the deck deck, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this part of the video. I know some people prefer to go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can find more information about the rules of this specific tournament and also a link to my Patreon page. So that's patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. And I'm mentioning that because um, the Patreon program is a way for you to support me as a content creator. So if you enjoy my content, please take a moment to look at patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. Okay, and now that that's all out of the way, I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm gonna start with the deck of David. Let's take a look at his ATOC brew. And here we see the deck of David. So first of all, this deck, I've called an ATOG deck, but actually there's not even a full play set of ATOGs in this deck, only three of them. But still, when I'm looking at the list, it feels really, really ATOG friendly, right? ATOG is a creature from antiquities, one red and one for a one, two. And if you sacrifice an artifact, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So it's ideal to combine with artifacts like the Black Vice, for example, because usually later in the game, device may not be that useful anymore and you can feed it to the ATOC. It's great of course with the mana vault. You play the vault, you take the mana out of it for example to cast one of those huge Triskelions and then later in the game instead of taking damage you feed it to the ATOC and deal damage to your opponent instead. And the hard thing about ATOC is that when you've got enough artifacts in play it's so tricky for your opponent to kind of decide what he's going to do. I mean, is he going to make a block and then he knows that the Ato can probably gobble up the blocker with the help of some artifacts? Or is he just going to take the damage with the risk that he's going to take a lot of it because there are so many artifacts in play? So Atok is a really interesting card and usually a really pain in the ass for the opponent. Now, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, the first thing that I notice here are the four Rook Eggs. You don't see Rook Eggs a lot in combination with Atox, so I think that's pretty cool. We, for example, don't see Ank of Mistress. They're in the sideboard, but they're not in the main board, um, which is usually, usually a lot of these Atox brews decide to play Ank of Mishra over, for example, the Rook Egg, but I do like the Rook Egg in this build. So Rook Egg is a card from Arabian Nights, one red and three to cast for an O3. When it dies, so when the egg dies, you get a 4-4 Flying Bird token. A cool thing to note here is, that uh, you cannot flip with the Chaos Orb on a token card. So that's really cool. And also the Rook Egg works really well against a City in a Bottle because when your opponent plays a City in a Bottle, the Rook Egg goes to the graveyard, you get a 4-4 Bird token, and that token actually sticks on the board. So it's really nice anti-tech to City in a Bottle and to Chaos Orb. Um, of course, then when we look at the two cards under the uh, Rook Egg, we see two Earthquakes. The Earthquakes, of course, go great with um, with the Rook X because then you can deal damage to your opponent and kill your Rook X at the same time. Of course, you can also kill the Atox, but then again, you can of course feed some artifacts to your Atox so that they survive. Talking about feeding artifacts, like I said, Black Vice, Mana Vault, great targets for the Atox, but also Triskelion is pretty good. Triskelion 6 to cast for a 1-1 construct that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. So it's turned into a 4-4. You can shoot the counters off and then when it's just a little 1-1, it can still be useful as food for the ATOC. Talking about food for the ATOC, you could even consider feeding the Suchi to the ATOC and for example, use the four mana that you then get from the Suchi to build a huge fireball or a huge earthquake. So that's also kind of some nice synergies in the deck. And of course, we also see those chain lightnings that go really well with the Rook Egg. The cool thing about chain lightning is one red, sorcery speed, three damage to any target. But you can pay two red if you're targeted by the chain lightning or a permanent you own to send it back to another target. So what you can do is you can play a chain lightning on your rook egg, kill your own rook egg, then pay two red and deal three damage to your opponent. Or if you have another rook egg, pay two red, kill that other rook egg as well. So rook egg chain lightning is some really cool synergy. 
Um, anyway, this is the deck of David. It's looking quite interesting. Looking forward to see those Rook X in action. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Jimmy. And here we see the deck of Jimmy. So this is really your traditional dad guy ill deck, right? We see all the components that makes this deck so good. So it's just black and white. And you've got all those white, beautiful problem solving cards. Disenchant, Swords to Plowshares, Balance, the best card when you're behind. Then he's also playing with one Sarah Angel. And he's really um, dipping a little bit more into black in terms of, you know, the black spells in this deck, Sinkhole, Black Knight, Hypnotic Spectre, all require double black to cast. So he's going a little bit more into the black than into the white, you could say. And of course, he's playing with four dark rituals. And I think when you're looking at this deck, what he wants to do is he wants to kind of ramp up, play the tempo, play with the dark rituals, get a creature out early, preferably, of course, Hypnotic Spectre, but it could also be a Suchi turn two with a, the help of a dark ritual. And then, of course, he is playing with sinkholes himself, so he can slow his opponents down by playing those sinkholes. So that works really well. And then we see the usual suspects, of course, Mind Twist, Demonic Tutor, just awesome cards. We see Chaos Orb in there, one Icy Manipulator, which is quite nice. And, of course, a Soul Ring that's going to help him ramp up as well. Now, there's one elephant in the room, or actually a beast in the room that I want to talk about, because we have one copy of Guardian Beast in this deck which seems kind of odd, doesn't it? So Guardian Beast is a card from Arabian Nights, one black and three to cast that reads, as long as Guardian Beast is untapped, non-creature artifacts you control can be enchanted, they have indestructible, and other players can gain control of them. This effect doesn't remove auras already attached to those artifacts. So in other words, if you've got Guardian Beast and, for example, Chaos Orb on the board, you can keep flipping. Now, of course, after a flip, it returns into play tapped, so you got to wait another turn. But every single turn, you can use your Chaos Orb. I mean, that is huge. That is super powerful. But I think the main reason for Jimmy to put it in here is, is yes, maybe also that combo, but also as a distraction. Because if he plays out a Guardian Beast, the opponent instantly is going to think, hey, what's going on here? I thought it was playing, you know, a Dead Guy Ill list, but now there's this Guardian Beast. Uh, is there more to this than I thought? You know, and, and, and that can have an influence on the way your opponent plays against you. So I really like it when you're playing these one-offs that can be decisive at a certain point, you know, because you've got your demonic tutor. So if you have a Chaos Orb in hand and a tutor, you tutor for a Guardian Beast. If you have a Chaos Orb, I mean a Guardian Beast and a tutor, you tutor for the Chaos Orb, right? So it's really cool. That can be really game-changing. If it's not game changing, if it's just your Guardian Beast without anything else, that's actually not too bad because it's a 2 4 for 4 mana. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. And like I said, your opponent is going to be completely confused. He's going to think, what? what? What does he want to do? So I really like this, actually, Jimmy. Of course, I'm just assuming that that's why you put the Guardian Beast in there. But let me know in the comments below if you listen to this. Uh, what your thought process was um, when you added that one Guardian Beast to your list. I think it's actually quite nice and, uh, and spicy. Then uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the sideboard here of Jimmy because I think it's going to be tough. Um, this matchup is going to be tough for Jimmy in the sense that, you know, if he has that Dark Ritual Hypnotic Spectre uh, play on turn one, he's probably going to see his, uh, his Hippie get bolted. You know, so it's quite difficult for him playing against a deck with Chain Lightnings, Lightning Bolts because there are just so many good targets for David against his deck of Jimmy. So when we're looking at the sideboard, what can he do? He is playing with one COP red, so he could put that in. He could put an extra Sarah Angel in. You know, he, he, he could do a little bit. He can he can play an, play an extra Mace, which kind of works really nice against the Atok. So there are some options for him, but I think before sideboarding and just in general, I think this is going to be a tough matchup for Jimmy. It doesn't mean he doesn't stand a chance. I just think it's going to be a tough match for him. Anyway, this is the list of Jimmy. We've already looked at the list of David, so that means we're ready. Let's go to round one of the Hill Giant Cup. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Jimmy sitting on the right with his Dead Guy Ill deck, and on the left we have David with his Mono Red Atok Egg deck. I believe he's on the play. Yeah, there you go. David starting with a Mountain Pass in the turn. Let's see if uh, if Jimmy has some turn one dark ritual shenanigans. No, he does not play out a Mishra's Factory in passing the turn. Almost forgot to draw there. So this is the first game here at the Hill Giant Cup. And there is a tap of two. There is an Atok. So that's a pretty decent start for David. Probably would have wanted uh, a Vice as well. That would have been really nice. Vice turn one, Atok turn two. But this is pretty okay for him as well. Are we gonna see 
an answer here from Jimmy. He could play a land and consider attacking with the factory. Then again, of course, he'll take damage next turn. Playing out a swamp here. Perhaps Ritual into Suchi is an option as well. Tapping the black. There's a Dark Ritual. What is he going to do next? Mind Twist would be pretty ugly right now. Play a Sinkhole. Interesting. Having one floating. You could animate the factory with that deal two points of damage. That's exactly what he does. I guess. No, he does not. Play Chaos Orb. So he's giving David an opener here. If he has a Shatter in hand and he can play a land, he can Shatter it. There's some glare on the cards, unfortunately, but we know what they are. A Mountain and an Atok. We can look a little bit into the hand of David. We see a Maze of If. There's an attack. We see a Rook Act there. So dealing one point of damage here to Jimmy. Going to drop to 19. There's a Mishra's Factory. Sorry, a Workshop, of course. Mishra's Workshop playing a Soul Ring and a Chaos Orb. Choosing not to flip, though. There's an option, of course, to flip on the Chaos Orb of Jimmy. Chooses not to. Passing the turn. And Jimmy really taking his time there with the card drawing. Playing a Plains. And a pass turn. Let's see, what did he find? A land, it seems, so a second mountain. He's got enough mana now to play out a trike, for example, attacking here with one. And this is so annoying with the Atok, because if you're Jimmy, you can think, I'm going to animate the factory and block, but then he's probably going to feed, for example, the Soul Ring to kill your factory. Of course, he also has, you know, he knows he's playing against a red player, so there's always a danger animating that factory, because it could mean you're taking a bolt and your factory dies, for example. Looks like he's just taken the one damage. I think that's a good decision. It's just one point. And tapping four here. Are we going to see a Suchi? There's a Rook Egg. And passing the turn. So one of the things he could do, of course, is later flip on his own Rook Egg. I don't think he will, but it is an option. And now what we see here, by the way, David is playing on the playmat that the winner of the Hill Giant Cup gets. And that Hill Giant on there is actually drawn by the man himself. There we go, there's the Scrubland. And that's of course Dan Frazier. So Dan Frazier there made the art for this playmat. And that uh, the playmat goes from winner to winner every single year with all the winners, of course, signing the mat. A scrubland here from Jimmy, which is quite important in his deck because it means he's got access to double black. A Hypnotic Spectre looks quite good right now. There's a Dark Ritual. Okay, what is he going to do with all that mana? Three black in the pool. He's going to play a Black Knight, one black floating. He wants to flip on the Mishra's Workshop. Okay. First flip of the tournament, here we go, and it's a hit. And a pass turn, interesting. And the reason I'm saying interesting is because I wonder why he chose to do all that with the, uh, with the Dark Ritual, because he had enough mana, he didn't really need the Ritual for that, but then again, he would have been tapped out, I guess. Maybe he doesn't want to. And the game's a little bit at a standstill at this point. There's a Diamond Valley. Going through his hand and passing the turn. David finding a Mana Vault there from the top. There's a Maze. There's the Mana Vault. And of course you can consider to just attack here with the Atok. He's got the maze to take the Adok out of combat anyway. Deciding not to attack though, that's a little bit surprising, to me at least. What I do like about David is that he's just keeping his Chaos Orb where it is. He's very patient.
There's a pass by Jimmy. So Jimmy not really finding what he needs. There we see, I believe, a mountain from the top for David. Not ideal for him either. There's the attack with the ATOC. There's the block. Is he going to feed something to it? No, he's just going to untap. And a pass turn. So one of the things he could have done, of course, there is feed, for example, the Soul Ring to the ATOC, killing the Knight. And in response, Jimmy would have eaten the Knight with his Diamond Valley, gained some life. There's a Suchi. So what I would do now personally, if I was David, I would attack with the ATOC, and if Jimmy makes the same block again, I would feed the Soul Ring to it. Yeah, because now you're giving Jimmy information that you have this Suchi. There's a pass. Because I would kind of trade Soul Ring for a Knight. But again, that's what I would do. Obviously, David knows his own deck better than I do, so he can make a better decision, probably. Let's see what he finds there. There's an attack, 4-4, Suchi coming in. So one of the things he can do right now is double block, and then, of course, in response, David can activate his, uh, Ka uh, his Chaos Orb. Okay, but there's just a block on the Black Knight, and Jimmy's gobbling it up. One of the options for Jimmy would have been to animate the factory, but then, of course, there's a risk of getting hit by that bolt. There's another factory here for Jimmy. He's on 20 still. But now, I mean, the hurting starts, I guess, because David can attack here with... Ooh, there's a vice. How many cards in hand for Jimmy? I believe four. Now he can attack with the Atok and the Suchi. I wonder what he's going to do here. Animating one of the factories going for a block blocking the Suchi I believe okay there's a lightning bolt in response to the second pump I guess and yep it dies and that means he's gonna take five no just the one so the blocker was already declared and before damage was dealt so with the bolt you really have to know when to time it right so first uh, Jimmy's going to say, I'm going to block your Suchi, I'm going to pump it to a 3-3, then he's going to pump it to a 4-4. So in response to that 4-4 pump, you play your Lightning Bolt to kill it. So Jimmy here counting his mana. I believe he's got five cards in hand now, so that means next turn he would take a damage from the Vice. But he's in a difficult position. There is a city of brass. Ooh, this works. Source to plowshares on the rook egg. That works because it's removed from the game. So it doesn't go to the graveyard, so you don't get your 4-4 flyer. Then again, I mean, Rook Egg for swords? I would do it. Look at that, he's using his Chaos Orb in response. He really wants the 4-4 flyer. Yep, it's a hit. So he gets the 4-4 bird token on the end step of Jimmy. That's why it's there on top of his library. And it's looking really bad for Jimmy. I mean, if that 4-4 flyer is added to the army, he can hit him for 9. Pass the turn. Oh, man. This is heavy stuff. I wonder if maybe Jimmy has a balance in hand. Because that can really save him here. There's the attack for 9. That would mean he would drop to 10 if he doesn't do anything. He can, of course, animate the factory. He's going to take 9. Going to drop to 10 here. And there's a pass of the turn. This is really tough for Jimmy. There's another factory. Tapping a white. Ooh, does he have the balance? 
There's the balance. Oh, this is such a game changer. Such a game changer. Oh, wow. This is getting Jimmy completely back in the game. And this, this again shows you how good balance is. I mean, Jimmy was done for it and now he's back. He's still on 10. I mean, he's got to get rid of some lands though, but look at all those creatures go. And of course, Jimmy wants to keep his factories. That makes sense. He can only keep three lands. That's not a lot. He's going to lose so much. Okay, four. Oh, yeah, four lands because of Maze of If, of course. He's looking at his hand. Does he want to use the mana still for something? So he's going to tap the City of Brass for a mana. And that's it. Perhaps he's floating for a white. If he now also has a Sarah Angel. But that balance play, fantastic here for Jimmy. Getting him back into this game one. There's Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh. Unfortunately for Jimmy though, there's that Maze of If. Or else it would have been perfect for him. There's a mountain by David. I believe there's another mountain in hand. The other card I don't know. If he can find a sinkhole here, it would be really problematic for David. Actually, it's already is quite problematic. Look at all those factories. So animating the factories and he's going to go in. Of course, using the maze for the hippie. And using a bolt. And then he takes three points of damage from the remaining factory. Dropped his 17. At least he had that one bolt. Another, yeah, that, that's always what you're going to see. If you draw into another vice. So like, I don't need this right now. Is Jimmy going to take over the game here <laughs> after that balance? There's a City of Brass. Again, he can animate exactly. Oh, he's going to be a bit conservative though. Just attacking with the one, dealing two points of damage. Are we going to see a play in the second main? Going to take another damage from the City of Brass. Another Hypnotic Specter. David, okay, okay, that's something. I believe he drew into a trike. He's got another mountain in hand. He's gonna play out the mountain. I mean, the trike at least does something. It can kill, of course, one of the uh, hypnotic specters, but maybe he wants to kill a factory instead. I mean, he's got no cards in hand anyway. Doesn't have to do anything until he wants to, of course. Are we going to see a disenchant though? Sinkhole! Ooh, that is brutal! Sinkhole on the maze! That is pretty brutal! Now we can just attack through the air with the Spectres, deal four turn. That means uh, David's on a four turn clock. Actually, a three turn clock because after he's taken 12 damage or eight damage, he'll be on seven. Yeah, he's still on a four turn clock. Doing some math here, real quick. Anyway, David dropping to 11. And of course, David understands that as soon as he takes the counters off the trike, then he's going to take the uh, attacks from the factories as well. So he doesn't want that. So it's a bit of a catch-22. He just needs really good top decks, perhaps a Wheel of Fortune, because he also has the double vice. I think Fortune would be the best card for him to draw into. That's his out, because then Jimmy would take six points of damage from the vices alone. He would drop to two. And then if he can find a bolt, he would actually win the game. There's an attack. Wow, very aggressive. There's an animate. Going to turn it into a 4-4. Interesting move. I wonder what card David has in hand. Can also choose to put the damage here on Jimmy, put him on 4. Then he still has a turn to go. I mean, when you're in this position, you know, and you're David, you got to really think uh, at your outs. And he doesn't have a lot of outs, but you got to play towards them. That maybe if you have that perfect top deck, that you win the game. So I do understand this move. I think I would probably put the three damage on the face of Jimmy, put him on four, and just hope that you can find maybe a fireball or an earthquake to make it a draw, or of course uh, a wheel of fortune to actually win the game. <laughs> oh, 
And of course, David is taking his time here, thinking, what do I want to do? Do I want to kill the factory? No, I think this is a good decision. This is playing towards your outs. There's a rook egg and a pass. I really understand this move from David because now Jimmy's on four, so that means with the right card, he can win it. Fireball wins the game, Wheel of Fortune wins the game, Earthquake draws the game for him. Animating here, attacking with the full forces. There Jimmy goes! And a block, of course, on one of the factories. He still takes six. Doesn't matter much. He's on five. What did he find? Oh, Hammerheim! And that means Jimmy is taken. Game number one here. Wow, wow, wow. But like I said, I really understand the move from David attacking there with the trike. I absolutely get it. I think it was a good move. Another option could have been, of course, to just shoot the counters on Jimmy and not attack with the trike. Then you still have a blocker. You can always do that. But... Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. You got to play towards your outs. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So Jimmy winning the first one, meaning David's on the play, starting with a Mistress Factory in the pass. Let's see what's going to happen. A Factory as well for Jimmy. So again, not that uh, turn one ritual play. There is a Mountain. Could animate attack for two, exactly, that's what he does. Putting Jimmy on 18, passing the turn. There is a swamp, no taking it back though. He's got a better option it seems, playing a scrubland. Of course that can make both colors. Not animating the factory. There's another mountain by David. Playing a Mana Vault, passing the turn, so next turn you could potentially play a Trike. There is a Swamp, are we going to see a Hippie? No, just a quick pass. There's a Shatter in hand there for David, so he could attack with the Factory, hoping that Jimmy's going to block. Ooh, there's an Ankh of Mistress, so this is a card that came in from the sideboard. Passing the turn. So he's playing three Angst of Mishra, I believe, in the sideboard. Of course, a really good card in combination with Atok as well. There's a Scrubland, two damage for Jimmy, dropping to 16. And a pass again, so no pressure here from Jimmy. There's also a Strip Mine in hand. Could consider stripping a land, which is quite nice with the Ankh. Stripping the Factory here. Taking a damage, of course, because Strip is a land. And passing the turn, look at that. So he's not attacking with the Factory. Realizing that there could be a disenchant there in the hand, of course, or swords in the hand of uh, Jimmy. Taking more damage, dropping to 14. <laughs> Looks like he's going to play something. A circle of protection, red. Ooh, that will be quite good. Again, a card coming from the sideboard, of course. That is pretty problematic for David. I mean, he's got artifact creatures, he's got, of course, the factory, but now that factory becomes even more important. You really want to think twice before you animate it. There's a pass. This is a really good card for Jimmy. And he's still on 14. What would really help David here is finding a vice. Jimmy tapping three, playing a Hypnotic Spectre. And playing another land though, wow, he's gonna go to 12. Does that mean that he's per perhaps, that perhaps he's got a Sarah Angel in hand? Or maybe he just wants to keep a disenchant open. There's a Lightning Bolt on the Hypnotic Spectre. There's a Trike, that is pretty good, that Trike. Exactly, tapping for six. There's the Triskelion. So a 4-4 four, four creature from the Antiquities expansion. Artifact creature. Passing to turn here. No disenchant in response. Five lands, untapped. Circle of protection, red. 
I believe he drew into a strip mine there. We are playing the Swedish format. That means there's only one strip in these decks. There's a strip mine. On the factory. Yeah, for a moment there I thought he was stripping the mountain, the untapped one. I was a bit surprised about that, but he was targeting the factory. Makes more sense, especially with that COP red on the board. There's actually not that much that Jimmy has to do here. I mean, the ank is still annoying. And actually, I'm saying there's not that much that he has to do. That's actually not true, because we've got the Triskelion on the board, of course, which is a 4-4. So he's got to find an answer to that. I believe there's going to be a demonic tutor. Okay, I want to say Disenchant, but he can, of course, tutor for... A dust to dust? I'm, I'm not thinking was a dust to dust in his sideboard. I'm not quite sure anymore. Because that would be a really nice play right now. So he's going to shuffle up. And I really wonder what kind of card he's going to go for. I mean, the cool thing would be if he's got a Guardian Beast in hand, he looks up a Chaos Orb or, you know, the other way around. An obvious choice would be perhaps a Disenchant. I mean, Mind Twist could be in there. There's a Disenchant. Okay, so perhaps he looked up the Disenchant. Three, of course, to the face of Jimmy. And look at his life total. He's quite low now. He's on seven. There's more damage for David from his own ank. There's a Chaos Orb. Okay, this is interesting. And he's, is he passing the turn? I would activate it right now. I think this is, in my humble opinion, a missed opportunity for David because the reason I'm saying that Jimmy only had one land open, so he couldn't respond with a disenchant. So if I would have been David, I would have just flipped on that COP red as quickly as I could to get it out of the way. But perhaps David is following another line to victory. There's a mind twist. Yuck. That is some heavy stuff. Are we going to see a response here? Does have a Shatter in hand. Could consider Shattering his own Mana Vault. Yeah, so losing Fireball, Shatter. And the card from the dark, I keep forgetting the name, it deals 6 damage to everything. It's an instant. It works really well with Suchi, by the way. And there is a factory in a pass. It's going to untap the Mana Vault. Pass the turn. Oh, man. And it's looking good for Jimmy, I have to say. It's looking bad for David here. He's on 5, David's on 15. What David needs here is a vice. That would be really nice for him. Jimmy going through his hand. Tapping, are we going to see a creature here? Tapping 4, there's a Suchi. Hitting the board for some pressure. Is Jimmy going to pass here? Looks like he's got four in hand. We see a Sarah Angel there, some lands. Sarah Angel, of course, being quite good. He could play that next turn. He wants to keep the two mana open. To kind of, you know, keep David in doubt that perhaps it's a disenchant he's, he's uh, keeping in hand. There's a Blood Moon. Okay, this is quite good because now it blocks out the Sarah option for Jimmy. There is a Mox Ruby and a pass. This is really a good card here for David. I mean, can you imagine if he wouldn't have played out the Blood Moon, then, you know, Jimmy could now play out the Sarah Angel, deal eight damage a turn. That would be huge. And of course, also animating the factory. 
but it's not meant to be. There's an attack for four. Is David going to flip on the Suchi? He's going to take the damage, going to drop to 11. And Jimmy a little bit in the tank here. Does he want to play out a land or not? I, I wouldn't do it. Although, of course, if he, I'm saying I wouldn't do it, I maybe I would do it because he's thinking about playing a planes, of course, to cast at Sarah Angel, so that makes sense, but that would mean he would go to three. There is a Suchi and a pass. Wow, this is an exciting game number two. It can go either way still. Jimmy on five, David on 11. Five cards in hand here for Jimmy. He could play out that other planes, play out the Sarah Angel, but that would mean he would drop to two, which is super risky. Because then, if David finds a trike, he wins the game. There's a disenchant. And there's the attack. So now David could consider using the Chaos Orb, flip on the Suchi, not take any damage. It's risky though. That's what he's going to do, because then he's losing his only weapon against the uh, COP Red. Yep, flipping it, hitting it. Jimmy losing the Suchi. It's not the end of the world for him, though. Next turn, he could play a Plains, play a Sarah. I mean, this game is a true thriller. There's a plane's going to drop to three, passing the turn. Oh, that is a risk. That is a risk. We can see the card. Is it a trike? If it's a trike, yep, it's a trike. He's winning this one. Andre Skellion. Uh, there's nothing he can do. He's got a swords in hand, but no creature to swords. That's the problem for him here. Wow, 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 wow. What an absolute thriller of a game and the good news is it's not over yet it's a 1-1 one, one. so we're gonna go to game number three game number three here we go and i guess the good news here for jimmy is that he's on the play here he gets to starting game three we also see a mulligan here with david and there's a factory and there's a vice okay so mounted into vice and of course that factory was played by jimmy so the first time we see a, a black vice here from david some damage for Jimmy, dropping to 18. There's a land and there's a Chaos Orb, passing the turn. There's of course an Urborg, that's the name of that land. Card from Legends, produces one black one tapped. And there's an Ankh of Mishra, another damage here. So we've got Ankh, Vice, it's really your traditional, I wouldn't say combo, but it's nice synergy. And Jimmy dropping to 15. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Hypnotic Spectre here? There's the Hippie. Not much panic here from David, so perhaps he's got a Bolt in hand. Going to play a Mountain here. Going to drop to 18. Tap, and yep, there's the Bolt. And he can also attack for two here, of course. Put Jimmy on 13. That's exactly what he's going to do. And there's a pass turn. There's a strip mine there for Jimmy. Could consider stripping the factory. So stripping the factory is taking damage though. Gonna drop to 11. Again, he can also attack with his own factory. But maybe he's got better options. I wonder if he wants to flip on the Ankh because the Ankh seems to hurt him a lot. Attacking though, so not doing that. Well, he's got one land open, he could still do it. Yeah, he's gonna animate. Ooh, he's gonna flip on a mountain. So he's really gonna attack the. Oh, it's such a miss. That is unfortunate for Jimmy. Oh, probably went a little bit too hasty. Oh, that feels so bad. That feels so bad. There's another vice. And I think four in hand for Jimmy, so he's not taking any damage from that. But oh man, that's gotta feel bad. Tapping two black for a sinkhole. Okay, so he had that sinkhole and they wanted to flip just to take care of all the lands. David makes sense. 
There's a City of Brass. He's going to drop to 9. He's going to drop to 8. Also attack for 2. So putting David here on 14. Here we see another Lance. He's going to drop to 12 and a pass. Does he have a Shatter in hand? Let's first see what Jimmy can do here. Doesn't have... Well, he has access to white mana because of the City of Brass, of course, but he's already on 8. David on 12. Gonna play a Dark Ritual. Demonic Tutor, one black floating. This is looking really good for Jimmy here in the deciding game. Again, I wonder what he's gonna look up. It's quite hard to predict. Usually, I'm used to people just playing Blue Power and you say, okay, Tutor for Ancestral Recall, which is kind of boring. I like this way more where there are more options. I mean, perhaps he's gonna find more land removal, you know? Destroy another mountain. Yeah, that's what he does. I mean, it makes sense. Gonna drop to seven, attack for two. Gonna put David on 10. David finding another mountain. But I mean, that Ang is now also hurting him. He's gonna go to eight. And he's got two trikes and a blood moon, it seems. So no answer for the factory. Gonna drop to six. Oh, seven against six. It's looking so good for Jimmy here. Finding a Suchi. There's a soul ring. Animating attack is gonna drop to four. Is David gonna lose here in game three? Okay, finding an Atok. He's a really good top deck here, also because of the vices. Passing the turn. I mean, Jimmy is really close to victory, but he's not there yet, though. And remember, he's not playing any direct damage in his deck, so he's gotta win through combat damage. He's gotta get some creatures through. If he can find a flyer, that would be ideal for him. An Hypnotic Spectre, perhaps. Doesn't, of course, have to double white. I believe he's got a Sarah Angel in hand, but no double white to cast it. That's very unfortunate for him. Gonna tap four. Okay, there's a Guardian Beast. The Guardian Beast is actually kind of okayish. It's another creature on the board, at least. What did he drew into there? It's hard to see. There is another Ankh and a pass. Wow, and that is that is ballsy. But of course, David can feed his own Ankhs to his Atok, so it's not that ballsy because he's got control over it. But it's really annoying for Jimmy here. I mean, if he wants to play the planes to play the Sarah Angel, if he finds it in the first place, but then he'll take four damage, he would drop to three. He would also have to tap a City of Brass to do it. He would drop to two. Which is a big risk again, you know, you're, you're then again looking at a top deck scenario where David can still win the game. We saw that in game two, where he found a trike to win it. There's a pass. What else can he find? We see two trikes, a Blood Moon, a Suchi, and another card that I cannot identify. Perhaps it's a land. I mean, if it's a land, one of the things that he could do exactly is attack, feed the angst to the Atok. And now Jimmy has to block, right? He's got no other option. Because if he lets the Atok go through, then David can just simply gobble up his artifacts and win the game. Remember, each artifact is plus two, plus two for the Atok, potentially. So he's got four artifacts, means plus eight, plus eight. It could be turned into a, a nine... A 9-10, that took me a moment. <laughs> Animating the factory, blocking the Atok here on the factory. Who's gonna double block? Interesting. He is gonna double block. Wow, what are you gonna do now? Are you just gonna gobble up everything? To kill everything? This, 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 I mean, I can imagine David really taking his time for this. This is a big decision. Eating up both of them to probably kill the Guardian Beast, and then he could play the land and play the Blood Moon. Exactly. 
Exactly, and then Jimmy can no longer play out the Sarah Angel next turn. There's the land, there's the Blood Moon, exactly. Oh, this is such a bad scenario here for Jimmy who really wanted to play that Sarah Angel next turn, but now he can no longer do that. But I do believe if he has a disenchant in hand, he can of course tap the City of Brass for a white, cast a disenchant on the Blood Moon. Looks like he doesn't have a disenchant though. There's a pass turn, is this the end of Jimmy? Ooh, finding a Suchi, he can play out the Suchi. Tapping four, there's the Suchi, passing the turn. Wow, this is this is really an exciting matchup so far. Is it a Thower Stone in hand for David? Or I don't believe he plays with Thower Stones, but it looked like one. There's the attack, there's the block. He's gonna feed the vices to it, passing the turn. So he is trying to turn up the heat there. No, that wasn't a Felwer Stone, by the way. Oh, this game is really exciting. Seven for Jimmy, four for David. There's the untap and the draw, right? I mean, he needs some basics. There's another Swamp. Okay, so perhaps if he's got a Black Knight or something, he doesn't pass into turn. There is a Mana Volt into a Suchi attacking here. Probably going to sack the Volt to the Atok, dealing three points of damage. And I don't think there's much that Jimmy can do. He only has two black and all the other mana are colorless because of that Blood Moon. Well, Mountains, they're red, but that's not going to help Jimmy. No, there's the Blood Moon, so that's not going to work. I think all he can do is take damage here. You can see Jimmy's frustration. He's like, I was so close. I almost casted that Sarah Angel. Yeah, feeding it to the Atok, dealing three points of damage. Jimmy dropping to four. He's got one last turn to turn the tide. Game number three here, 1-1. One, one. If he can at least find a blocker, that's going to buy him some more time. Tapping four. Okay, there's a blocker. There's a Suchi. There's another Swamp and a pass. I believe another Mountain here. Both players on four, by the way. This is really interesting. I think, yeah, I would attack with both because Jimmy has to block the Suchi or else he's dead. He doesn't have white open. Oh, look at that. He's going to play a trike, feed it to the Atog. I think he can win. Oh, he's not. I think he could have won. If he attacked now with the Atog. No, he couldn't have won. He couldn't have won. No, no, no. That's It's not correct what I'm saying. No, this makes sense. Passing the turn. But there's a, a white source for Jimmy, meaning if he's got a... If he has a disenchant... I mean, this white source is huge. I mean, then again, if you have a disenchant, you probably want to wait until David turn, turn just see what he does with blocking. Jimmy really in the tank here. He's like, what can I do? He's got a Swords to Plowshares there. Okay, that makes it super interesting because, of course, you can also sort your own creature. Not that he's going to do that now, but... Such a versatile card, sorting the Atok here. Yeah, that makes sense. So he's, he's going to gain a life. He's going to go up to five. So it's Suchi versus Strike. Ooh, there's a Mishra's Workshop. He's got another Trike in hand. Then he can win the game. 
Oh, but he's passing the turn. I believe there was another Triss Kelly in hand, right? Or am I missing something? Because in that case, he could play the trike out and he could hit Jimmy for six. But I guess I guess I saw that wrong. I cannot imagine Dave. Oh, of course, the Mishra's workshop is a mountain because of the blood moon. Okay, of course, that's why he doesn't play out the other trike. There's the A talk. And the last five turns, that's why the dice is there. So remember, we're at a tournament, so that means there are 50 minutes per round. And if the round takes longer, then they say last five rounds. So that's why the dice is there in the middle. So this is the first of the five last turns. There's an hypnotic specter. Are we gonna find a draw here? So the turn is passed, so four more turns to go. Oh, now he can win it. There's the trike. And he can take off the counters and kill Jimmy. Wow, 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 wow. This is so unfortunate. If I look back at these games, I mean, Jimmy lost twice against trikes while he was on the verge of winning the game himself. Oh, he's not dead yet. Look at that. Swords to plowshares. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And then there's the attack with both. He has to block the ATOG, of course. So ATOG's gonna die. There's a pass. Oh, wow, I thought the game was already over. My bad. Oh, man. And there's a disenchant in the hand of Jimmy. So he can disenchant the trike exactly. So then he's going to feed it, of course, to the ATOC, which makes perfect sense. I mean, I think for Jimmy, you're going for a draw right now. This is the last turn for David. If he can find an artifact or a direct damage spell, he's got a lot of outs, actually. Yep, he can feed his Chaos Orb to the ATOC and win it here in his last turn in game number three. Wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I really, really enjoyed this magic. Thank you so much, David and Jimmy, for this very entertaining first match of the Hill Giant Cup here in Hilversum, the Netherlands. And that was the episode for today. Now, if you'd like to see more from the Hill Giant Cup in Hilversum, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because we'll be back next week with the other rounds from the Hill Giant Cup. And we're going to show you magic from this tournament all the way up to the final. So stay tuned here at Timmy Talks to uh, follow this tournament. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of patrons at the moment. And that is great, of course, but it would always be great to have more patrons to support me as a content creator. How can you do that? It's quite simple. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can support Timmy Talks financially as well. And the good news is it already starts with one dollar a month and for that measly dollar you get access to the timmy talks discord you get access to the timmy talks online events that i organize and also your name will be mentioned at the end of every video in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll
Bumba Kazik! <laughs> <laughs>